Good morning. Purdue dropped their third straight last night at the Kohl Center in Madison, Wisconsin, and looks to be reeling. We'll talk about it this morning. I'm your host, Boiler Dowd. Mom, thanks for watching. But first, check out martinvintage.com. Martin Vintage, the place where you can get those great retro Purdue t-shirts. They're soft, they're comfortable. Enter Boiled at checkout for 20% off. That's martinvintage.com. I didn't sleep well last night, honestly. I couldn't go to sleep till well after midnight because I was still pissed. I hate feeling this way. I hate getting that wrapped up about a game that I can do nothing about, but it happens from time to time. And sometimes I wish that I had a little bit of, a little bit of that athleticism, a little bit of ability to go along with my passion, but I never was that good of a basketball player. These guys are good. Purdue's team is filled with talented guys that can play the game when they want to play. They clearly don't want to play right now, and it's obvious. If you saw the post-game comments from Vince Edwards and P.J. Thompson, it just kind of reaffirmed what you already knew. Not only are they not playing well, they know they're not playing well, and they're just waiting for things to get better. This team, these seniors, they're all great, right? They're all guys that can play well. They all have their strengths. And when they're together, when they're playing the same game, this team is damn good. We've seen it. To win 19 straight, it's noteworthy. But what they're doing right now is they're all just waiting for the game to come to them and they're waiting for things to get better and not doing anything proactively about it. Check that. One or two guys are doing something about it. I can say Isaac Haas was working hard. I'd love for him to make a couple more shots, not take the ball so high on the post and just convert at the end of those, those hard fought post plays. But he's still working. If you look at what he's doing without the ball, he's busting his ass. Carson Edwards is working. Carson Edwards wants the ball. Carson Edwards is taking shots. He's working. He's doing what he, what he has to do. After that, no gel Eastern probably. He came off the bench, provided a spark, and his seniors, the guys that are his leaders, the captains of the team, did nothing to reply. It's tough to watch. It's tough to watch this, te- this season slip away because that's what it feels like is happening. It's funny. Purdue had this ad campaign about defending the title. If you've seen the posters, you've seen the boxing theme, you saw the guys in gloves and having a belt, but they didn't answer the bell last night at all. Not even a little bit. They lost to Ohio State, which they should have won. And that's a tough one to swallow, but one play, if you fight, if you grab the rebound, Purdue wins, right? Michigan State, great team. One of the best teams in the nation. I don't think they deserve the number one ranking, but hell, what do I know? So but that, that one you could say, ah, they fought, they went right there. But well, last night's game, there's no damn excuse. Wisconsin's a bad team. Wisconsin is a bad team that shot poorly. And Purdue still couldn't manage a victory. Dakota Mathias simply isn't making shots. He might be working without the, without the ball, but he's not doing it like he did just a few games ago. He is running the curl, but it seems like he is accepting bad shots early in the shot clock, which he didn't do really for long stretches this season. He didn't do it at all. And that was one of the things that was so great about this Purdue team. They didn't take bad shots. Now Matthias is taking shots early in the shot clock. He did it two or three times last night. They were killers, and they led to runouts on the other side. P.J. Thompson, I don't know what's going on there. Not only is he not shooting well, he's not even taking shots. And then on top of that, He's not dealing out assists. That's a problem. Vincent Edwards. Vincent Edwards is rebounding the ball a little bit, but he's well off his average. He's off his average in points. He's not rebounding like he was just weeks ago, and I don't know if he seems to care. And that's the hard thing. You watch those post-game comments. They are just hard to swallow. This team is better than they're playing, but will they get it back is the question. They don't seem to have much passion. They seem to be reflecting what Matt Painter's teams reflect this time of the year. This isn't the first time we've seen a Painter team back its way into the tournament. Obviously, this season's not over, but boy, it sure looks like they're pointed the wrong direction. It's time for things to change. It's gonna take something like Carson Edwards and Matt Harms just getting flat out pissed off, acting spazzed out, acting like it matters because the seniors don't seem to think that. Isaac Haas, he, like I said, he's steady. They all seem to just want to wait. Just wait for things to get better. Guess what, guys? Three games left. Three regular season games, the Big Ten tournament, and then the NCAA tournament. And you will never play together again. That's it. That's all. Accept it or not, it's the fact. You want to wait for things to get better? You can wait and the season be over. You can wait and say what, what might have been like Juwan Johnson did years ago. This is unacceptable what the way they're playing. 
Which Purdue team is real? I don't know. All right, is it the team that won 19 straight, or is this bull crap that we saw last night at the Kohl Center? What I do know is they are what they are right now. And if they woke up today feeling like everything's gonna be just fine and, and they're just gonna wait for things to get better, they're gonna be waiting at home after they get knocked out of the tournament in the round of 32. But it is not all lost if they can correct, if they can care, if they can act like it matters. I will say one thing, and I've hit this point before. When Purdue's playing bad, I hit this point because it kills me. When your team is getting beaten up on the road and the refs aren't blowing the whistle, it's the coach's job to affect change. We've seen good coaches do it all year. They chew on the refs during the dead balls. They keep going after them. When things are bad, when Haas is getting beaten up, he doesn't go to the ref and kick the ref's ass. He goes to Haas and talks to him first as if he probably says, hey, you're gonna have to fight through that, which is all well and good, but he needs to at some point say, I'm fighting here with you guys. I am with you in this battle, and I'm gonna go out there and have your backs in something you can't defend yourself on. He needs to chew on the refs. I know it's not his way. I know it's not demeanor, and it's almost a wish for me to do, but I can't stand to watch other coaches do it over and over and over, effectively go after the refs. If you don't think it matters, then you don't watch college basketball because it changes the complexion of the game. And I'm not saying the refs caused the loss. I'm saying they need to go in and fight. They need to fight all of the factors that are happening in that game. And they didn't fight any of them, honestly. Purdue's defense was okay. It was good enough to hold Wisconsin to a very low shooting percentage, especially from behind the three. Ethan Happ was good, but he wasn't great. But he was good enough to beat Purdue last night. This Purdue team that we watched last night, not only is not good enough to be a number one seed in the tournament, they're not good enough to win a game or two in the tournament because other teams, even teams that are 16 seeds, seeds care. They wanna be there, they wanna fight. And guess what? Nothing would make their season better than knocking off a team like Purdue. Purdue may end up with a three or four seed, but those teams are gonna remember that Purdue was in the top three for a big chunk of the season, for three or four weeks. They remember that. There's a reason Wisconsin stormed the freaking court last night. They stormed the court because it mattered to them to beat a highly ranked team. It didn't matter to Purdue to lose at the Kohl Center though. So a correction has to happen. I don't know if it will. It's not too late for it to change, but somebody has to change it. They cannot wait for the change to come. Sorry, got wound up. This has been a Boiled Sports Handsome Hour Quick Cast. I'm Boiler Dad. Have a great day. Dag nabbit. BS all the time. <laughs>